Why you dey buy it? Yeah? Take product, yeah. Make you dey careful, no go damage your life. You've got one life to live. My original. You should know where to go. This is Standard and You, Nigeria's most authoritative initiative on television where you get to learn more about product safety and quality. In the last three weeks, our focus on the program has been on life-endangering products. Yes, products that are life-threatening if you like. This category of goods are products that require proper and careful handling. Products you should never take for granted or mishandle. This is because every time you mishandle or misuse these life-endangering products, they can lead to death or destruction of properties. The electric cable is one of such very important products. Why should a consumer talk to an expert before purchasing an electric cable? What makes a product substandard? Answers to these questions we shall provide you after this short message. My name is Ife Inwa Okonkwa. Please stay tuned. Wow, Chief Mike, how are you? Fine. I'm going to Sun office for the certification of my wheat flour. Oh no, things have changed. Sun has simplified all its activities. You could have even stayed back in Kano and process all your papers online. Whoa. With the efforts of Sun, the products of SMEs can now compete globally. Sun has put in place necessary machineries in support of the growth of SMEs. At highly subsidized charges, SMEs can now get their certification, laboratory testing of their products, as well as purchase of standards. Meanwhile, Sun is carrying out massive seizure of substandard goods in the market and have gotten legal backing to prosecute offenders, all to protect consumers and SMEs. Sun, improving life through standards. Since we began the special campaign against fake and substandard products in Nigeria, the Director General of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, Madam Frau Selim, has been interacting with stakeholders and governors of states in the Federation. The latest of such visits was to the governor of Ebony State, Southeast Nigeria where he solicited the support of government and people of the state in its fight against substandard products. Madam Farouk expressed the determination of the SON to tackle the menace which he described as a scourge that has continued to take its toll on the nation's industrial sector and economic activities in the country. The DG, accompanied by top officials of the agency, who were received by Deputy Governor of the state on behalf of the Governor, said the SON will continue to evolve measures and programs to support businesses, especially manufacturers of products, to produce goods of acceptable standards. The Standard Organization of Nigeria has been in existence since 1971. And uh, we are, the bane of our existence is to protect local industries, standardize our products, and protect the import market by making sure things coming into this country are standardized. But the major, major reason we are existing is to protect the safety of the public of this country. One of the most important things we can contribute to Boney State is help the SMEs uh, organize, build, and help them with management, help them with how to acquire funds from the public and uh, banks. So our activity is very, very invaluable when it comes to small-scale industries. It's very invaluable when it comes to the public. Um, so our not being available every time we're needed in this state is a tragedy in the city's own because we are living in neighboring state and from there we operate here. The magnitude of this issue can be seen as in the whole country right now Apart from Ibonyi State, Baelsa, and Zamfara, every other state will have representation. So the great state of Ibonyi is um, definitely going to be part of our priorities to make sure we do have an, uh, a presence here. 
He disclosed the agency's strategic plans to tackle the campaign against substandard products to the grassroots by deploying tools of standardization to empower more people with basic information on product safety and quality to enable them to make informed decisions whenever they purchase goods from the markets. The deputy governor who spoke on behalf of the governor assured the chief executive of the SON of the state government's support to the Standards Organization of Nigeria to read the markets of fake and substandard products in the country at large. In Ebony State, we, we have this very symbiotic relationship with the federal government. And uh, that relationship has always been a compulsion on us, I would say, to make sure that we make available office accommodation and spaces for even federal agencies where they are incapable of doing so. I can't think of any one federal agency that is operating in Ebony that does not have an office, courtesy of His Excellency the Governor. And therefore, making a request for an office space will not be out of place. I can beat my chest and say that His Excellency will allocate office to you in the next few weeks without anybody prodding him to do so. <laughs> it is his nature because he has a desire to ensure that the state uh, accelerated development program is without hindrance from any quarter. So I'll be requesting that you ask your uh, man in Ebony State to be more available to the state government in doing so the issue of office accommodation will not be a problem. Establishing a laboratory for some in the United States is something that we are yearning for. It's possible for you to do that within the shortest possible time. I will also take a guarantee on behalf of the government that land will be made available as soon as possible. So one thing I will charge you to do is to put your name in the history book as a director general of standard organization that brought its full presence to the land of a police state. It will be, it will be glad to our heart that under the administration of engineer chief David Moise Omai, one man sent by God called uh, Farouk Sa uh, Salim, the Director General of Standard Organization of Nigeria, came and built a world-class Standard Organization of Nigeria's office in Ebony State. We'll give you all the support, and I assure you, we will be with you to make that happen as soon as practical. We will bring you details of the DG's visit to the agency's National Meteorology Institute in Enugu in the next edition of the program. Welcome back. The program you're watching is Standard and You, powered by the Standards Organization of Nigeria. It's an important product found in every home and offices. This all-important good is used for carrying electricity or electronic signals. Why is the electric cable considered or classified a life-endangering product? Join me as I tell you all you need to know about the cable. Power cables are means through which we get electricity delivered to our homes, hospitals, schools, offices, industries and all establishments where power is needed. Cables are essentially copper or aluminum conductors. These power cables are insulated to avoid endangering the lives of consumers because of the current or electricity the cables carry. Cable has a limit to the amount of current it can carry. Each of the cables too have what we call cross section. Okay? Every cross section it is predetermined as a limit to the amount of current it should carry. For example, when you say 2.5 mm squared, okay, 4 mm squared, 6 mm squared, and so on and so forth, 
each of these cables have limited amount of current they can carry to avoid endangering the lives of properties and human beings. But unfortunately, many of the users do not know about these limitations. And some of the so-called, let me say, uh, people who use these cables, they don't know the limit of each of them and as to what limit you can use them. So when you use them in the wrong way, you endanger the life of the persons in that vicinity as well as the properties. These electrical cables differ in configuration, size and performance. For most projects, I mean, the one, the one that I know, there are specifications. There are consultants, there are engineers to what have specified the type, size, and everything required for a particular project. The installation of this all-important product should be done only by an expert and not just anybody. Sadly, experts in the industry say most owners of properties and developers simply opt for the services of quacks who have little or no knowledge on the types of quality of power cables. And people keep on wondering, oh, markets burning down, what could have been the cost? If you find out a great majority, from experience when I was in the mines and power, when we were in inspecting you know, the causes of accident and fire incident, we discovered that essentially they are electricity related. And it's either the cables have been overused, which means they have passed the limit of the current they're supposed to carry. So when they carry the current they're supposed to carry, the insulation will break down. When the insulation breaks down, you have problems of fire incidents. That's one cause of fire incidents. Another cause is even the switch gear that you use along to, if you do not have them functioning the way they're supposed to function, or have the right protective device to protect these cables, again, you have problem of danger. Because for every cross-section of cable, there are defined routine of circuit breakers or fusing elements to make sure that power is caught before the cables are damaged. The influx of substandard power cables into the country has remained a source of worry to consumers, local manufacturers, stakeholders in the industry and the standards organization of Nigeria. These fake and substandard products are of various brands and sizes and are considered cheap. There is what you call pre-commissioning tests. Even when you are even let's say pre-buying or when buying. There are some tests, we call it pressure testing. You have to pressure test the cable to make sure that that cable can withstand the current and the insulation level they are designed and produced for. The SON has made significant investment in both human and infrastructural development over the years to check the distribution of substandard power cables in Nigeria, which has led to large seizures. Most of the seized substandard power cables are not foreign brands. They are selling popular local manufactured cables that are being cloned outside Nigeria and brought back to be sold in the country. This ugly development, no doubt, has continued to take its toll on operators in the country. It's common knowledge today that power cables made in Nigeria are of good quality and the best when compared with those imported into Nigeria. The standard is set in a way that if we have taken fluctuation of uh, electricity supply uh, within the, in the country into account. And that's why that standard differs from the standard of other, other places. And that's why they also the effectiveness of uh, reliability of local limit uh, cables are much, much better because then uh, it can stand fluctuations because it's already taken into account. The Standards Organization of Nigeria wants you to do the following before you purchase the power cable. One, ensure that the power cable you are buying is registered 
with the Standards Organization of Nigeria. Two, ensure that the installation of the cable is done by only a professional. Three, report anyone you suspect deals on substandard cables to the Standards Organization of Nigeria. Welcome back, and we are still talking product quality and safety. Our satellite is still on the electric cable. What is it about the electric cable that makes it a dangerous product? Head electrical unit of the agency engineer Cherry Achema tells us more about the life endangering product in this practical demonstration. The cables are made of the conductor and installation. Most of the conductors are made of copper because it has high flexibility and very little resistance. There are different types of cables designed for applications ranging from transmission to heavy industrial use. No doubt, the electric cable is a life-endangering product and its safety depends largely on proper usage or handling of this very important product found in every home, office and other outlets. It's an important product that can be very dangerous and sold at market across the country. Purchasing this product is as easy as walking into a shop where electrical appliances or electrical products are sold. Get one and with the tap of a finger, a consumer puts it to use. Investigations reveal that not many can identify what makes the electrical cable fake, substandard or standard. The focus of this demonstration by the head electrical unit of the Standard Organization of Nigeria engineer Cherry Achema is to help consumers identify a substandard cable from a standard one. This is a coil of cable. It's a made in Nigeria uh, cable. And of course, we expect the first thing that we should look out for is the MANCAP logo. This is a MANCAP logo from the Standard Organization of Nigeria. And that says that this cable has gone through all the tests. It has been uh, you know, tested and have been certified that it is fit for the use of every consumer. Now, what other information that we should we look out for? We need to know whether this cable is made in Nigeria. This, where is it coming from? Is it coming from China? Is it coming from UK? Is it coming from uh, Nigeria? Is it coming from Ghana or anywhere that it's coming from? We need to know. And then what other information? We need to know, okay, this particular cable is of this size because this is what guides electricians, this is what guides you know, consumers in the purchase. Why purchasing, you are buying a one uh, mm square cable, you, it's supposed to be there, it will be there. And then uh, aside from the country of origin, we need to know who is the manufacturer of this cable. Header, you should have your address there, you should have your logo there, you know, so those informations are very key. And then, um, we need to know again the length of this cable, which is very key and which is supposed to guard against cheating. It might interest you to know that the Standard Organization of Nigeria commits millions of Naira to the acquisition of quality infrastructure to ascertain the quality of products, especially live endangered ones like the electric cable. This, according to engineer Chema, is because when such life endangering products fails to meet the requirements of the standard, they become dangerous and a threat to consumers. A lot can happen to the insulation. This is the insulation of the cable and this is the conductor. Now, if you bend it, as you bend it, there is a, you know, a, a kind of stress at this bend. So why we test, we test that even after you bend it, the insulation at this point should still be safe for use and it should not cause fire because when it comes in contact with another cable you know that carries current it will you know uh, you know it, will, it, will, it fire will, will you know be ignited now if we have to check this uh, insulation we will have to check the thickness of this insulation and this thickness is the one that surrounds this conductor we want to know how thick it is. And every cable has its own different thickness. Here, as my unit head has said, from here we can now pull the conductor out of the insulation gradually. 
so that we do not also stress the insulation we want to test. Already, it's going to undergo that uh, strength test. So we'll pull it out, and then we have prepared this number. And uh, we have also imputed the value for the diameter and the thickness here. So we'll be running this on this software. First, we'll first of all mount the first sample, which we'll be testing. So having mounted this, so we'll come back to the software. I think the test, the machine is now drawing the insulation. So we'll wait while the graph also is plotting on the system. So here we have the maximum load, the tensile strength, and the elongation at break. The standard has values also that will compare these ones to. So based on the requirements of the standard, we'll be able to ascertain if the cable has passed or not. For every particular size of the cable, the resistance is different. For a 2.5 mm, mm squared uh, cable, the resistance is different from one mm. So the equipment will tell us whether it actually meets the specification of this standard. And then what else do we look out for? We will test, in, you know, we, that's what we call uh, resistance at 70 degrees. And what is the purpose of this? There, there is a construction design for leakage. Once that does not, you know, meet the requirement of the standard, of course, at that uh, 70 degrees Celsius, the resistance that you are going to have will be far out of range with the, uh, the, 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 the standard. And then how do we still know the safety of cables can still be determined by passing it through fire? Like we say, if, for instance, this cable ignites fire in the course of uh, you know, installation or having been installed, how would the standard tell us how this standard, I mean, how this cable should burn? It should not burn beyond a particular length. If it burns beyond that particular length, that means that cable is substandard. And that is a very key safety you know, uh, test that we actually carry out. So that even when you have installed and something happens, anything can actually happen in the course you know, of uh, the use of electricity. But if it happens, what is going to happen, at least there is some level of safety that this cable will not burn to the point that it will extend to the whole house. In cases where uh, technicians will tell you, okay, they need 10 coils of cables, and having bought those 10 coils of cables, you, during installation, they still find out that it's, it's short. And then the owner will possibly think that it's the technician that has actually taken his cable, but meanwhile, it's not like that. It's because the length that is required, which is supposed to be 100 meters, is not the exact length that was sold to the technician. And we need to know whether that this particular company is, you know, uh, the, the cables that come out of this uh, company, out of this uh, factory, is actually 100 meters. And again, let's not be deceived. Sometimes they put 100 yards. We don't use 100 yards, we use meters. So it must be 100 meters. Where they write 100 yards is not up to 100 meters. So there's still some level of cheating there. Once each of these parameters that we have gone through is not meet the requirement of the standard, there's that danger of fire. Engineer Chema pointed out clearly that it's extremely important for consumers to always seek the advice of experts when purchasing a life-threatening product, such as the electric cable, which when not properly handled or substandard, could lead to massive destruction of properties and lives. He advised consumers to always ask questions about the quality of life-endangering products and stop exposing themselves and others around them to what he described as avoidable debt and destruction of valuables. COVID-19 has changed nearly every aspect of our daily lives and consumer spending is no exception. As prices of products double and with many consumers losing their incomes, 
consumers are clearly reducing spending on all non-essential products and services. Fundamentally, COVID-19 is changing how and what consumers buy. But what about your preference for quality? Is it changing in this new normal? Quality cannot be compromised. When you patronize substandard and fake products, you do not get any value for your money, and such products can be a threat to your safety, especially if it is a life-endangering product. A standards organization of Nigeria remain committed towards standardization and quality assurance. Do not lose your hard-earned money to substandard goods. Be alert. Be quality conscious. And that's a wrap on the feedback segment of the program. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. We love to hear from you. So keep your messages coming in with your full name and location to the number 0705-972-4455. Follow us on Facebook at Standard and You, Instagram and Twitter at Standard and You underscore. You can catch up with missed episodes online at youtube.com forward slash standard and you. Remember, buy original. Sell so authentic and use only the best. Stay safe. Why you dey buy it? Yeah, fake product, yeah. Make you dey careful, no go damage your life. You've got one life to live. Buy original.